Yeah, I welcome everyone to the Python organizers panel. Um, so I want to start with a question to the audience. Who knows that conferences like these and basically all Python conferences are run by volunteers? Knows that? Oh, well, very good. That's good. It's because that would be like a first message to many people who are new in the community because they probably don't know that yet. So, and um, uh, here's a few of European and organizers from, from Asia, like from all over. And uh, uh, when we had the idea for the panel, it was, hey, let, let's just talk about what's the organizer experience, where we're struggling, what's, why, what's the motivation, why are we doing it, uh, what's driving, what's the enjoyable parts of that, and have like, and just like, a I think it's called fireside chat nowadays, but we don't, we don't have, we only have a monitor as a fire here, so. So actually we see uh, a fire here, but you don't, now. Nah, kidding. So anyway, so I would just like start with the question, so just go around. What's your motivation being an organizer? Okay. And, and maybe just like one, one back, just like in short, introduce yourself and what, what, what's your contribution to okay, the community? Perfect. Thank yeah. you. I'm Jimena. I'm president from Python Spain. I work in very close with spy ladies, and I'm always uh, helping to organize conferences like the PyCon X. Um, well, for these almost two years as a president of a, a community, a PyCon community, my commitment is with the diversity. Uh, was the thing that is more important to me. I want to empower women to join uh, STEM, to go to an event and tag and this kind of thing, but just not with women because diversity is, we know, is a lot of more things. Uh, because, for example, young people need to come to these kinds of events because we need people that go after us. <laughs> we need to rest in some point. And this is my, my motivation, my the thing that I most appreciate about my work, my volunteer work with the community. Uh, hi, um, nice to meet you all. I'm Alessia and I come from Italy. And uh, as such, I have been involved in the organization of PyCon Italy for the past seven years now. And I, the year later, I started contributing uh, to the organization of EuroSciPy, the European Conference for Pattern and Science. Um, and I've also involved with PyCon DE. Only one year, though, when I was living in Berlin last year. Um, and my focus on helping the, 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 the conference has been mainly on uh, financial aids and communication with the community, so emails, social events, um, social network social networks and, um, and let's say, a uh, general overview of, uh, of things. Um, my motivation has always been about the people, uh, less, let's say, about the technical content of the conference, because you can get technical content every day online. It's super easy, but what it, the difference between reading a book or uh, watching another person speak on YouTube and a conference is all the networking that happens in the <laughs> hallway track, as they say. Um, so in a way, uh, as they say, you come for the language, but you stay for the community. Uh, I am David, I'm from uh, Portugal. Uh, my history is uh, a little bit strange, at least. I, um, I've been using Django since 2007 and um, started attending uh, Django Cons in 2017. And uh, at that time, I realized that uh, I wanted to give uh, something back, so I applied for uh, Django Con 2020. And uh, I end up, ended up with uh, more than I bargained for. Uh, I actually ended up doing uh, 2020 uh, virtual, 2021 also virtual, and uh, finally last year, JungleCon Europe uh, in Porto happened. Uh, by that time, we, since we were organizing JungleCon for three years in a, in a row, uh, most of the um, gears were already in place, so we ended up with a bit of spare time and decided that one conference was uh, 
easy enough, so let's do two conferences. So we <laughs> ended up bootstrapping uh, PyCon Portugal last year, and it will happen again this year. And um, during that time, we also, um, I think, um, for some communities, and uh, JungleCon in particular, uh, here in Europe, we are also struggling a bit to find new organizers. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, uh, JungleCon Europe is, ba in, is basically uh, any, any team from any country applies for uh, hosting uh, JungleCon Europe. It, uh, the, um, the submission will be reviewed and uh, eventually accepted. And uh, you basically get JungleCon Europe in your hands and uh, you get all the knowledge from previous uh, organizers. Uh, you get all the support for, for uh, the community, but uh, what uh, keeps JungleCon Europe going is uh, people willing to, uh, to actually continue JungleCon Europe because uh, traditionally it, uh, JungleCon Europe uh, stays in a, in a single country each year, so we are, we are skipping around, uh, around Europe. Uh, last year when the, last year, no, this year, during April, we were having um, a Zoom meeting with the uh, old organizers and new organizers, uh, in, and new potential organizers, and uh, it, uh, I felt by the end of the meeting that uh, people are still not... Uh, We're just in, in intro, sorry okay. to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm going on. Uh, but sorry. basically my motivation was to give something back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Honza Javorek, and uh, I'm, I'm from the Czech Republic. Uh, I help uh, the local Python community since the very beginnings of it. So that's over a decade, I think 2011, something like that. And um, my original, I, I, I've been, I've been uh, a meetup organizer, uh, a part of the conference team, PyCon CZ, uh, now I'm uh, on the board of the local nonprofit, uh, which supports the local uh, local community. Um, I did a lot of things rotating over roles uh, as I've se I've seen myself fit. And my original motivation was that I wanted to come. Uh, I, I liked Python as a language. I didn't know the language, but it felt like nice language. I wanted to learn it. Uh, but there was no Python meetup in my town I, I could come to and learn. Uh, and somebody told me that I don't need to know Python to organize meetups. <laughs> so I said, okay, that makes sense. I just invite people to a pub and we will talk. And that is what happened. And then uh, that continued for uh, five more years and so on. Then I rotated over the roles as I've seen myself fit where I was needed, so on. And um, the motivation then was that I realized that it's, uh, it feels good uh, to do something which helps other people. Hi, I'm Barbara. Um, I've been part of the Czech Python community since 2015. Um, I attended a Django Girls workshop one day, and then I joined the meetups in Prague. And then uh, it was also the first year of uh, PyCon CZ in the Czech Republic. And uh, how it happened was that um, the PyCon CZ team was posted on Facebook, and they had a lot of typos in there. And I, I was criticizing that, or like I told them, hey, you've got typos in your social media posts. And Honza actually texted me like, you know what, stop hating it and join the team. So here I am today. And um, the motivation to organize events is, uh, or generally to join the community, is you get to meet new people. We have a lot of fun. Uh, I have to say that some of the people in the community are really my great friends, and I always look forward to meeting them. And especially organizing the conference is that I really like to see a huge group of people at the end you know, clapping and enjoying the atmosphere, and then the after party is legendary. So <laughs> that's my motivation. You know, you work one year for something that lasts one hour then, but it's, I love the hype. And so, yeah, so that, that's, my, that's my motivation. And I'm really grateful to be here as well. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim. I'm from Taiwan. And uh, I, I run local Taiwan 
uh, meetup since 2013, and uh, I also a ch chairman of PyCon iPad at 2013. And uh, the motivation, I think, like others, uh, at the beginning, I think uh, our, our city need a meetup, but we don't have, so I so I held it, so I hold it, so I held it, and uh, I want to learn something. But make what make me happy is that uh, people in that in that place can make friends with others and also solve their problem, and the people together make better and better. That make me happy. Yeah, and uh, okay, that's all. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. So I joined, actually, EuroPython was my first EuroPython 2014 in Berlin. And I saw that's this, the EPS organization. Oh, yeah, joining is for free. Let's, let's go there. And then there was a voting, and nobody wanted to do auditor. And I said, I can do that. And uh, three, week, three months later, I was running a conference in Bilbao with strangers on email, which I could never imagine it possible, and I uh, actually met all my co-organizers when the day we opened the conference. <laughs> and this was very enjoyable. The Python community was new to me as well, I, I thought, and I'm always like, for me, the motivation is I think I, I like the cross-pollination. You, I always say, in the Python community, you can meet astronomers to web developers. Um, I, I, I think it's very, uh, the driver is like to, to, to enable people to uh, cross-pollinate, talk, different angles and the diversity and see, see all these different things. And yeah, then of course I was many years in EuroPython program chair, um, joined the board, also current sitting board member, so I, I came back and, and eventually things happened during EuroPython, so we relaunched or PyCon DE. <laughs> so I'm part of that still. Um, we brought it together with PyData Berlin, as PyCon D is PyData Berlin currently. I'm also one of the co-organizers, and uh, eventually people dragged me into EuroSciPy as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I'm also a board member of the German uh, Software Association. And my motivation is, I think, um, I like to program even more, but I think what I can bring to the table is, uh, I know I have like from my background, business, contracts, actually, actually my, 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 I actually used to study the law, but I didn't finish, but still. Um, <laughs> so I think the best thing, my best contribution is building structures, processes, and being like a, a, a reliable backbone for the community, because this is just like my motivation, because I think that's the best contribution I can get, uh, bring, bring to the community and enable others to thrive, That's, and it's very enjoyable, uh, like even after 10 years now. <laughs> that brings us to the, the next question, so uh, what are the challenges? Well, maybe, sorry, what are the challenges? Um, and then just pick the next person. Yeah, I think um, one, of, uh, one of the main challenges that we usually face is uh, there is a lot of uh, will to help, so you often get uh, lots of uh, submissions to, uh, to volunteer, but uh, sometimes, and that's partly our, our fault because sometimes you don't uh, give enough information about the details of the volunteering, people have their, their own lives and they simply uh, ghost the, the process and uh, everything uh, falls after that. So um, one, one of the hard things is, is keeping everybody uh, to the point. And uh, so one of the important things to, to have in uh, any uh, group of organizers of any conference is uh, the, a small core team that will be there from start to end and then uh, use all the help that we can for, for the volunteer team because they are willing to help us but they have their own uh, priorities and sometimes the conference is not uh, on their minds and that's, uh, that's uh, okay. Uh, maybe, I don't know who has... Who yeah, this year uh, the challenge was to restart um, uh, PyCon after the COVID break. Um, so the last Czech PyCon was in 2019, so it's been four years, and um, everybody wanted PyCon CZ to happen. But then the energy was really low. Like people were just asking, like, will there be PyCon CZ? And I was saying, yeah, well, let's do it. Oh, well, I don't have time and so on. So to kind of like put a team together and kind of try to bring the energy so that we really 
do the organization we really you know, finish. So we started in spring, let's say, and normally check back on us in June. So we had to move it to September because obviously we wouldn't be able to do it in two months or something. Um, so that was the challenge this year. And uh, because I feel like in the past years, you know, everybody expected that it's gonna happen every year. So even the organizers were you know, in the mindset, like, yeah, we will work again, because basically you start organizing right after the event ends, right? So that's the challenge for this year. So I, I hope that um, we again kind of like jump on the train and, and have, keep the energy for next year's as well. Um, for me, the most challenging thing is when you are organizing a conference, a meetup, whatever, the really think that you are doing is manage people. That is the most difficult thing uh, that you can do. And also, you need to understand a big difference. One thing is the community. Another thing is the assistant. Because the community probably has the same vision and mission that you have. You want to make the conference more diverse, more open, and that everyone is happy and enjoy, and it's not just for the Python language, it's also for the people, but the assistants don't have this vision, not, not, well, not all the assistants, and there is a lot of people, there are a lot of people that these kind of things that you put uh, more soft talks, not just technical talks, don't, don't think that is a good thing for the conference. And also that you try to get more people from uh, minorities, they also is like, mm, I don't know why you are doing this, we, why w the force of the community uh, are in, in these kinds of things. So at the end, haters gonna hate. And you need to accept that communities who are going to help you, and you try to think that the people understand that diversity is important, but you can't be thrown out for this reason. You don't get it well. <laughs> I think this is the most challenging part. Well, I can add something, at least from the perspective of PyCon Italy. Um, one thing that we struggle with is the lack of documentation of our processes, mm -hmm. because, well, fortunately, we have a core team that's been pretty stable over the years. So uh, let's say everybody kind of know what they need to do, when they need to do it, and how. Um, but it's always the same things that land on the same people. Mm -hmm. So you get very experts in what you're doing, for example, running the program. Mm -hmm. You know you have a set of deadlines, you know you have a set of things to do in a specific order, but we don't have a, a handbook or written down how we want to do things, or how they've been done in the past, so it's hard to get people in and have them up to speed fast. So of course, every year new people join the organization and some leave. But these new people need at least one or two years of running the conference alongside with the core team to be able to get things on their own. So uh, this for sure one thing that we can improve, but of course it requires a lot of time and yes. while we are organizing the conference, it's hard to spend time on writing how you're doing it. Yes, I think currently we're in the stage, oh, a conference, great. This is everything we want to do basically after the conference to do better after the conference but then there's this peak of basically enthusiasm <laughs> and suddenly say okay we need to relax and then basically everything falls apart <laughs> until the next year and that's, that's a real challenge with the documentation um, I think one of the challenges is actually uh, getting people together also I think one of the challenges is actually also to sometimes say no because like to have like to build a good team and committee because we never lack people having good ideas, but we need people who also, okay, what's the action plan? Who is going to do it? We, we have enough of good ideas. Yeah, so we, we, lack, we lack basically time and, um, and, and, and execution of good ideas. So, um, and um, yeah, so uh, actually I think it's, it's always 
the most the biggest challenges, yeah, apart from documentation, building a good team, keep it running. Expectation management, I think, is something I learned, which is which is really helpful. And um, yeah, and of course time, uh, because like sometimes uh, there's peak times and uh, there's there. I sometimes have to say, yeah, currently I don't have any other hobbies <laughs> than Python community. So yeah, what's your challenges? So um, if I look back at the decade uh, which I went through, I think uh, the, the most prominent challenges has been repeating, and it is uh, handovers and burnouts. Uh, and I think documentation is a good example of thing which uh, is a tool in this uh, basically, like documentation helps handovers and uh, and so on. And there are more uh, tools like uh, having a, having a helper with every experienced person, basically teams of two for each responsibility and so on. But I think the the core challenge is handover and burnout, like ma managing of that in in the groups. Uh, I I have one personal rule, and that is. When I do something uh, for the community, uh, I can champion it in one person uh, in the beginning. I can start something new, and that is very efficient. And then I become expert in that thing, because that's what I do. Uh, uh, I mean, if I do it for longer time, I, I become the expert, uh, unlike the others who do, don't do it. But um, then my job is not done until uh, I can uh, leave the thing and it survives. The job is done when I hand it over to someone else and it survives. The, then I created something nice which didn't end with me. And that is the hard part. <laughs> uh, I, I find the most challenging thing is the incentive because we are all volunteer, so not like no more companies, so I don't have any right to promotion, no money. Yeah, so I always need to find a way to, mo to motivate others, such as, oh, you, you, are, you, you like to meet new person, and, uh, or you like to be, uh, meet some strong engineering, strong engineer, so I need to know wh what they want and uh, give him so he will be very happy in the group. Yeah, and uh, and then I need to find the, the the right one. Some somebody you can find his patient. He he has enough patient to make things happen. And somebody actually didn't clearly know what should I do. So what should you do? So uh, you need to guide him. Yeah. So I think it is the most challenging thing is to incent to motivate and uh, find the right one. Yeah. Thank you. So, now we've talked the challenges. Now let's move to the fun part. So, what was your for funniest, most inspiring, or heartbreaking anecdote and ever? So, who wants to go first? Who has like something? I can on? start. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, my anecdote is actually how I entered the community. Um, because, okay, so I was 18 years old and I was with my high school uh, friends looking at the website of the, co of the conference of Icon Italy because we wanted to attend, mm -hmm. right? And, um, well, the conference website was, is still built in two different languages, the Italian version and the English version, of course, so everybody can feel uh, included. The thing is, <laughs> very similar to your experience, the, 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 the translation had some errors. So you were in the Italian version and you would get like a paragraph in Italian and a paragraph in English, and the same for the, for the English version. So it was completely ununderstandable. So at the time, we had this chat named Olark on the website where you could contact directly the organizers. And I was like, hey, I'm trying to uh, book a ticket. I would like to join. But be careful because the website has some errors and maybe it's not accessible to everyone. And five minutes later, I had an admin account on the website. And they said like, sure, okay, come and fix it. <laughs> and that was it, basically. <laughs> and trusting me to do that, like just a normal stranger on the internet, right? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's true, yeah, that's true. That's cool. cool. 
No, no inspiring stories. It's all boring. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just want, uh, I just want sharing one, one thing that it, it, it made me feel happy that it's, it's very good that I, I hold a meetup for ten years. I remember the first year, uh, a middle, a middle school student, maybe just thirteen years old, old. Uh, he is he taught by himself. It means he didn't enter the usual education system. It means he studied at his home, and uh, he he every every month he attend our meetup and uh, learns Python. And uh, as time goes by, uh, he he tries to be a speaker, and uh, his speech is better and better and more professional. And uh, maybe maybe last year. Uh, he he entered uh, AWS as a as a employee. Yeah, I, I feel very happy that a local media can make a make a, a, a small a small child become better and better. Yeah, so I just think uh, and a lot of people in this, this meetup up uh, uh, have good job. I may find uh, find a good job or find a good friend in this meetup. So I'm happy that I I held I held the meet up. So we have many stories, but I'm thinking like what's appropriate to say here. <laughs> but um, so in one of the PyCons that uh, took place in Brno, which is the second biggest city in the Czech Republic, and it's like 200 kilometers away from Prague. Um, so we invited the speakers. Uh, we would, you know, tell them just, you know, buy your tickets, plane tickets, whatever. We reimburse you later, and so on. Um, the address is here, you know, this is the schedule, you know, when to come, where to come, and so on. Um, so the conference is on, we're waiting for one speaker, and we couldn't find her anywhere, so we, we start calling her, and uh, she says, yeah, well, um, so I'm, I'm here. Uh, and we're like, well, here where? Like, at the conference, at the hotel, or can we help you somehow? Can we go get you? And she said, yeah, well, I'm in Prague, so I'm here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we said, well, the conference is not in Prague, but it's one bus stop away, actually. <laughs> There's a direct bus from Prague to Brno, but it takes, I don't know, three hours or something. And it was under one hour to go before the talk, you know, so we had to switch the schedule and so on. But it was funny because, like, she flew in from London and she just thought that the conference is in Prague because it's the biggest city, I guess, or I didn't ask her, actually. We were just happy that she finally arrived, but she had a funny story to tell as well. So things like that happened. <laughs> uh, this is a silly little detail, but um, we to improve the, the inclusion of the non-binary people, we did uh, for the toilets. Uh, some uh, posters that we put the things you can find inside, inside the toilet, not the gender image, like the passenger in the Euro, Euro Python. And <laughs> when you sit in front of the bathrooms, you can see how at the beginning people is so, like, totally um, lost. Uh, going inside one and running inside the other and checking again inside the other because it's like, oh my God, I, I'm wrong. I don't understand anything. <laughs> but at the end, you explain what is the purpose of these kinds of things and more or less people understand. And some people go to the, what normally is not the corded or the expected bathroom, just to say, hey, we can serve in because um, it, it's not important, no matter whatever you can find inside the bathroom, it's, it's just a bathroom, and if some people is going to be more comfortable if we, the, uh, if we are doing these kinds of things, it's okay. But yeah, at the beginning, it's always in every conference so funny to see people running away from the bathroom to another. So I, I want to remind one, one story uh, that we we wanted to organize PyCon CZ, and then the venue has kind of died before, uh, like one or two months before, something like that. Like it, it shut down the, the venue, so we had to move the conference to a diff different venue. And 
we had to announce to like everyone that it will be somewhere else. They had booked hotels and so on. And we even move, had to move the date because like one shift one day uh, somewhere, I think it was like from Friday to Thursday or something like that, because uh, you know the, the, the venues were all booked. And you know. so that was <laughs> really a funny <laughs> story. And, uh, and a similar story in my, uh, like, um, when, when I was still the main organizer, well, it was at the end of my organizing career of the Brno um, Python meetup uh, that I already lived in Prague, but I, uh, for every meetup, every month, I came back to Brno and, uh, and uh, for the people, but also for the meetup, I, I wanted to still uh, get it going. And, uh, even though there were people helping me, I was still like, I, I'm not leaving you, you know, I'm still helping you. And uh, I, the moment when I realized I am not helping that much was that when I accidentally uh, organized the meetup at two places at the same time. <laughs> It was a Christmas edition, and it didn't matter that much. But uh, uh, then I decided, well, maybe I should step down as, <laughs> as the main organizer after five years or how many, how many because I'm probably not contrib co contributing that much, <laughs> perhaps like to the minus scale. <laughs> so I should move on to other things, like writing documentation. <laughs> Yeah, so I think for me it's always like inspiring to thrive and dedication, um, also to details and other people. That's that's I think the most inspiring, and I might have a tear in my eye now. Um, happens. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but I think the the, the this is a tiny story that happened just like when we were on our way to the Berlin conference. I was sitting with my colleague in the train. There was a total stranger uh, sitting opposite to us and we were talking about the conferences and sponsors and then the person said okay Spock, do you work for them because I'm I'm basically saying no and we're running this conference and you know like and he said yeah I know that I I originate from Namibia and I, I, I learned watching the videos from your conferences and basically now I'm a machine learning engineer and I have a job here and that was like oh wow it's like a random stranger just on the train we basically say yeah that was, that was, I think, this year the, the most yeah, funny, inspiring story, which was pretty unexpected. <laughs> because here at the Python conference, I really know what to expect. It's like really friendly folks and uh, really dedication. So uh, but that was like really random. Um, yeah, so uh, what's the part? What did you learn being an organizer as well? Like what's your basically also like something you a skill or something you, you learned about yourself or something you, 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 yeah, you basically personally grew being an organizer. Oh, no, you didn't, you, you didn't no, no. have it. It's, it's not a problem because I'm you not... Do, no, we have no inspiring story for you. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> I don't have forgive a... my bad bookkeeping. Um, yeah. It's not a problem. I don't have a really good story, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what's your personal... But what's, what did you learn being an organizer? Uh, first, it's uh, hard work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you interact with uh, being a software engineer. Uh, I'm more of a back the stages guy, and uh, this kind kind of makes me interact with people more, and uh, in a good way mm -hmm. because uh, interacting with uh, customers is not that funny. <laughs> Um, and uh, it was a good exercise for for my team also to um, to be able to uh, to achieve all these uh, things. And uh, w in in my case in particular, because of COVID, uh, I think we were not uh, prepared for that, and uh, it uh, we were forced to uh, to make something something out of it. And uh, we actually did something, so it's something that. Uh, I'm proud of accomplishing. Well, I learned how much stress you can take. <laughs> um, a few years ago, because I'm, I'm part of two other conference organizing teams, and I think it was 2018, what happened is that I was the main organizer for PyCon CZ and a part of two other teams for two other conferences. 
and <laughs> I don't know why I did that, really. But um, it actually showed me that you can survive a lot. Yeah, and even happens. though you feel like you're at the lowest, you can always go lower. But <laughs> I mean, that sounds very unhealthy, but um, I survived. But the, uh, the thing is that you actually really learn to not to um, stress too much about things that you cannot change or are not so like huge problems. So actually, I, I call them like mistakes of two types. So what, whatever happens at a conference, like a fuck up that's, that only you as the organizer knows that happened, but the, the attendees don't know it, that's all right. It's like learnings for next year, but like don't fret about that, you know, and only focus on what's actually um, affecting the attendees, you know. So if you kind of like categorize these problems, only focus on, on those like public ones or outside ones. So that's the learning from when you organize several events during the day. Uh, for me, there's two things. One is that you are always going to have good and bad reviews. So you just be, need to be sure that you are fine and feeling good with the things you are deciding and doing. And the other thing that is very important <laughs> is that maybe uh, people feel that you are a bit bossy, but this is necessary bad because everyone wants to help, but people is scared about taking decisions and someone needs to take the final decision. And in the other hand, you can go and make polls about everything that every young can decide everything, vote and these kinds of things, but this sometimes just don't work because mm, the things are slower and not every young uh, join the votes and things like that. So don't be scared about a bit, a bit bossy. It's okay, it's needed. <laughs> uh, my takeaways, like I have so many, <laughs> like it's like <laughs> half of my personality now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I, I, I like uh, organizing things uh, forced me to, I don't know, call strangers, which I didn't like to call. <laughs> uh, but I would say, uh, I would say, uh, I learned uh, a lot about like communities, uh, which is uh, important for me because uh, now I. I left my job and I, I have my like full-time community. I it's my like small business. Uh, I learned um, volunteering work, the mechanics of it, and uh, I I didn't realize it. But when people started to come to me and ask me uh, about it, and uh, and I had the answers, I realized that I should write it somewhere on the blog or something because it's still repeating it's the same, same still still the same things and um, uh, I think I'm much better with people and and stuff like that I through the community work I got so much I would like say privilege because you know like various doors open for me or connections and uh, opportunities which I totally wouldn't have if I haven't invited the few, the, the, the first eight people to the pub like back in 2011 when it started. It's like crazy how it took me. <laughs> Maybe can I add one thing? Um, I learned to delegate tasks to other people, especially those that I hate. <laughs> So, for example, I hate phoning, okay? That's, we don't use phones like that anymore, right? Um, so, for example, basically in the past five years, I made maybe five calls uh, during organizing the events, you know? So I always try to ask somebody else, can you phone the bakery or the, you know, catering company or whatever? Like, can you do that? And, you know, you decide whatever, but, like, you do the call. If I can do so something over the email, I will. That's all right, because you can do it whenever, right? You can do it at night. But phoning, it's like, no. So, um, and then other things, obviously, but because as, as the main organizer, you need to know about everything, but you didn't need to do everything. You just keep an eye on that, you know, but you need to delegate stuff, obviously. 
Ah, uh, uh, because I'm from Asia, so the first, first challenge thing is the, the price of the ticket. Yeah, as you know, a, the good ability of Asian people is cost down. And uh, when we, uh, at the first year, uh, people always challenge us, hey, you all guys are volunteer, why your ticket is so, so pricey, price so high? And, uh, but from day one, we know uh, we need we, we didn't consider about the price, we consider about the value. We try to provide as much value uh, as we can. Yeah, so, yeah, like in, in, Asia, in Taiwan, uh, we, we don't have so much core committer, so we will try to invite uh, core committer to Taiwan and uh, compensate the travel expense, and we have a very good food, very good, yeah. So, uh, but and after 10 years, and the people get accustomed to it. Yeah, it's very hard for Asia country, yeah, because we like low price things. And, yeah, and, uh, uh, and the next thing that uh, becoming an uh, organizer in, in this big organization, uh, without promotion and the money, I think I try a lot of way to motivate others, yeah, we just said. And, uh, and uh, I think I feel, I'm a little shy, so sometimes I'm very nervous, nervous and I don't know, and uh, my, my, my brain will be blank. But when I think that uh, I, I will, try, when I focus on the things that I can inspire people, the things that can enable people, uh, if I think like that, then I won't focus too much on myself, so then I can become novel and, uh, and deliver good thought to others. Yeah, that's what I learned, yeah. Yeah, I can conclude this. Um, so for me, I think it was, um, so given that I got introduced to the community that I was rather young, I was not even out of high school, um, that was sort of my first chance of interacting with so many people that are different from me. So I think one thing that I, that I learned is respect for, for people and, and things that are different from you and what you know. So, and in the end, being part of this community and seeing how a volunteer team that can be so, so diverse can pull together something that is so beautiful and gives you so much energy and makes good, it's so beautiful. And yeah, I, I think I learned, like, uh, I, I, I never was a team player before to be honest. So I think I, I learned to be, be, be a team player now. I, I hope so. Um, I, I know I, sometimes I was a good team lead. I definitely know like in the first after conference, like when we did the, basically COVID ended, we had a conference. I know I was not the best team lead. So thanks for him to ring me. <laughs> so, but I, I, I always appreciate the feedback from the, my surroundings. So, um, so I think it made me like, um, a better team lead. Also, like I think it's it's it's, it's also a challenge to motivate volunteers because it's not like it's different than employees. So basically, yes. So you need a call. So I think I'm I'm way better like in also delegating because I'm also really bad at delegating. I learned not to look into every detail because there's also a thing we tend to do is to over engineer on details and and we we we, we forget to about thinking, do we, do we have to actually the capacity to do that? Yeah, I mean, I love to have every detail on the conference, but if we don't have the, um, the means for that, financially or more even on, on our time capacity, so we have to let go of some things and say, there's, there's always another conference in another year. So that, that, that's what I learned. Um, so I think, uh, and the first thing actually I learned when I entered the Bilbao conference, uh, 2015, I was organizing with strangers on email. So uh, I thought like my German urges like, oh, you have to plan, we need a backup plan. And then I said, okay, the session sharing is just like an open Google doc. And this, is, this, is, this can fail. But when I watched, and especially in this community, it was so amazing. No, you, you, need, you don't need a backup plan. You just need to go around. And if there's no session share, you just ask friendly people from the audience, hey, can, can you just jump in? And the person, and yeah, everybody would say, yeah, sure. And this is for, 
also for me a new experience who was try to basically be a perfectionist from, from the very beginning to say, no, let go. There's, there's, there's friends and friendly people around in the community and I, I can also rely on, so I don't need the perfect, perfect, perfect plan. So we just need a good plan and perfectionism is, uh, can be or is the enemy of the good as well. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my take. Yeah. So, can I add one more thing? Sure. I think you made a great point about uh, the people being diverse or the teams being diverse. I know it's a buzzword, but uh, the important thing is that if you have different people on your team, then it means that you are also making a conference for different people. Mm -hmm. If you are all the same people on the team, the conference will be the same as well. You know, like when I went to my first meetup, there were like 50 guys and two girls, you know, now it's more balanced, thanks to Pi Ladies courses. And it's such a different vibe and such a different atmosphere, you know. So I even though we kind of like don't want to talk about diversity because it sounds like such a buzzword and it's like, yeah, we hear it everywhere. I still think it's important just to think we are uh, organizing a conference for various groups of people, you know, beginners, advanced uh, programmers, and so on and so on. So when we keep this in mind, we really make a, uh, an event that's really like colorful and, and interesting for so many different groups of people. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, it's time for questions from the audience. I see there's some fellow organizers in the audience. There's some, as far as I know, not yet organizers in the audience. So uh, yeah, just let's open the conversation. Um, yep, there's a microphone. Just go to the mic and ask questions or give input. Oh, does it? Oh, now it works, okay. You mentioned that it um, seems like you ever start from, from scratch for every conference, and I, I can really relate to this. Uh, <laughs> uh, plus you, uh, and it's also, it's difficult for the get new volunteers because there's not too much written things, everything is just communicated verbally more or less. Uh, but organizing an open source conference or Python conference is very similar, doesn't matter if it's in Czech or in Sweden or in Spain or somewhere else. So do you think uh, there is some common ground to work together to come up with some documentation how to organize a conference in general and some more specific and maybe even what tools to use or share tools or share resources in one way or the other or some other kind of kind of synergy effects you can have because everything's open source, everything's by volunteers, there's nobody selling anything to anybody, so there should be some way to start maybe with a low level thing like with the wiki or some other documentation tool to write down things, how we do it, what would be the best, uh, what tools to use, how to communicate with people and so on and so on. So what do you think about it? In context, we get uh, EPS meeting in the open space yesterday and we're also discussing openly about it but yeah it yeah. looks like i'm talking a lot but um yeah because when when you prepare an event you have so many topics to take care of speakers catering blah 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 and uh, the whole book would be like this thick <laughs> you know and nobody would read that right yeah. so what i believe in is to when you when you organize uh during the year, you take on new volunteers every time, so they become more advanced organizers over time, and so this is how you kind of like pass the knowledge on, um, basically face to face, let's say, or in person, because nobody would read a million pages on how to, you know, find a good catering company or whatever. So I don't really have a better advice. You can always write down some bullet points, but then it's it might not be like detailed enough, but if it gets detailed enough, it's too detailed, so. It's kind of like uh, how many of you actual, actually read instructions for anything. <laughs> People jump, try to solve the things, and uh, they only go to instructions when something is going wrong. Yeah. So we need Stack Overflow for conference organizers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, something like that. <laughs> yeah, no, like, well, you uh, um, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm currently, my role is pretty much the documentarian of the Czech Python community. We have like <laughs> docs.pivets.org. It's in Czech, but uh, we have documented like how we do meetups, how we do stuff like that, how the nonprofit operates. And I have to say, uh, PyConCZ is one of the hardest things to document 
because it's like every year it's different. It's uh, it, like the, the, the knowledge flashes, uh, the knowledge uh, changes over time dynamically. The people are like event one event driven. There are many uh, there are many points in time which are like deadlines and so on. They are basically always busy or resting for one month after the conference. Uh, and there is there is a good point that uh, I think I think the knowledge is very locally specific. That conference in we had the conference rotating like Prague, Brno, uh, Ostrava, and there were different suppliers, different ways the team have been operating. So I think even for one conference it wouldn't hold together. And uh, there is this issue with reading, we <laughs> and uh, but there is also the issue with writing. Like uh, uh, there is like like um, documentation. Uh, yeah, writing with, documentation is hard. Yeah, I mean, it's even for programming. It that's that's like yeah, like twenty exactly. thirty percent of and time should go to documentation, and nobody does, right? No documentation is better than wrong documentation. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. And having outdated documentation for PyCon would be that nobody will read it, update it, any. it will be just a waste of time. So I think the, the way to, to do this for, for conferences is to have the Padawan system, where you have a team of experienced people who one does communications, one does, I don't know, catering, one takes care of uh, whatever uh, for a few years and then finds a volunteer who doesn't know anything about it but wants to help and basically splits the responsibility. Uh, it's like, you know, apprentice, apprenticeship. And uh, then you just pass it to the apprentice and do, go, go do something else, otherwise you burn out. And I think, I think even with tooling, um, for example, EuroPython uses uh, pre-talks and pre -ticks. Uh, we also used it in DjangoCon and um, PyCon, but uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, fixed in, to, in all conferences. Uh, every organizer has their own opinion about these softwares, especially the ticketing system, because it's uh, something uh, really particular. Um, so you can suggest a couple uh, a way of toolings, but uh, things change and uh, everybody has their own uh, opinion about uh, the kind of tooling that they want to use. For example, DjangoCon website, uh, most of the times is not even written in Django. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I, I, we, we, written it, uh, okay. we decided that if we are doing a DjangoCon conference, it will be written in Django. Uh, but it's not uh, common. Uh, for example, DjangoCon so US is not written in Django. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so every team will use the, the best tools that they know. Yeah. Uh, and it's not necessarily common for every conference. So. Yeah, my advice is that uh, get inspired by other conferences, but don't copy it because the cultural bias is so strong in any location. Your volunteers, your assistants, your people, is going to be different. It's so different to organize something in Spain than in Italy or in Germany. Don't, really, don't work the same things. You can be inspired, but don't copy, because you need to put the focus in your people. Yeah, I, I think, so my take on this, I think it's, Documentation, some rough documentation guidelines is always helpful, but I think more importantly, we, we try to build more like a, a mentorship network because I think sometimes just like a 10 minute or 15 minute conversation, just like, hey, we have this challenge, what's your experience? And then you basically, it's way more effective because we also have to consider, even if we take the time to write the perfect documentation, it will be different across countries, cultures, different different things. Also, documentation could too much standardize everything because if you look at your Python, it's constantly evolving, bringing new things in. It's, it's never the same conference, and I think that's important that we reinvent ourselves currently. So I think just picking people with experience in some field um, is, is, is the best way we, we, can, we can do. And then, yeah, but um, this is what I did also like with mentoring the new program team and the diversity team and at uh, for, for this year's conference I was very I would say hey this is my experience but 
I was very always emphasizing, it's your call. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just here to give you advice, and if you make another decision, hey, you're all adults, you're all like, yeah, and if there's a mistake, don't worry about it. It's like, yeah, just like that. No questions? Yeah. Hi, so I'd like to know, are there any tips you can share about approaching companies to be sponsors? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, so there's different ways. Um, 2019, we actually started outsourcing it for in, in Germany um, to, yeah, actually my company, which I want to change as well, because I think sponsoring needs to professionalize. You need somebody during the daytime, sponsors, um, sorry, sponsors, but some of you are very disorganized. Have, yeah. Some of you are already amazing as well, yeah? And I don't pull any names, but some, some, especially in sponsoring, you very often have new, new people who just have a new job and don't know the community, so I, I don't want to say basically you're trying to out. So there's, there's a lot of communication going on, and also, like, of course, we have to point out, we have international sponsors, and they... From, if they're from abroad, like across Atlantic, so they probably also don't know how things work and like sizes, like yeah, different dean formats, whatever. Like there's a lot of things to work out, um, um, uh, and so I, I think it's the best way also that somebody's there during daytime, be accessible, f replying fast. So it's it's should it cannot it should not be offloaded to somebody in the middle of night. Um, answering a lot of emails, you need the best thing there is a call, and then of course for finding sponsors, of course it's reaching out to sponsors, talking to sponsors, having a mailing list, and I think the best advice I can give here as well is plan early because many sponsors do like the, the they do budgeting and by the end of the year or in autumn or in the first quarter. Like usually, it's good to let them know there's going to be a conference next year before the end of the year, and if they're interested, they can at least plan for it in the budget. On short notice, it's hard because most of the time the budget is all allocated already, and even if they love the conference, there's no money left they can allocate. So then that's, yeah, that's something. Two quick tips that was for our conference is, one, if you want uh, new sponsors, don't go to the generic contact email. Go to someone across LinkedIn, for example, that maybe uh, can help you, that is interested in your conference or in the things you are, you are offering, and that this person sponsors you inside the company. Because if you go to the generic email, sometimes you don't get any answer. And the second thing, uh, create your own contract. Because companies have their contracts and you think it like, okay, we are providing this, you provide that, blah, blah, blah. But you need to put your own conditions. Like, this is the um, end date to uh, send the things. This is the date to uh, make the pay. Um, things like that. Because mm, you need to be also, you are also important. You are giving a lot of things to your sponsor. So put it in a, paper, and they so see this thing, to be more serious about that. And uh, if I can add something, uh, uh, we learned this the hard way, please put a clause about uh, having to suspend the event and uh, how much money you will you give back to the sponsors, because you will end up with some expenses that you cannot uh, uh, avoid. And uh, for example, uh, we have uh, several down payments for JungoCon 2020. And uh, we were lucky enough that they let that go to 2021, but uh, it was out of uh, their hearts because uh, legally we didn't have any clause that uh, actually protected us. So having a clause for all kinds of disasters, uh, in that situation we keep 20%, uh, for example, for expenses. I think it's uh, really important. Yeah, um, I think it's good to have personal and you know, like friendly relationships uh, with the companies so that it helps you that the next year, you know, you, you know who the person is to go to and because you're friends with them, so they come back and they're like, yeah, here are the money. So that worked when we organized the event every year. So, you know, even the companies would know, so they would account for that in, the, in their budget. 
Um, so it's good. Now, after the break, uh, you know, it's, it's been different. Also, the economic situation is different now. But still, we always try to, you know, have at least, like, one gatekeeper in the companies and be friends with them. So we invite them to after parties and such. Yeah. Unfortunately. Oh, you have something? Yeah. Uh, last, only a small, small tip. Small tip that uh, what I think helped us is that we have a local non-profit. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's non-profit. It's like, like the main thing is that it's a it's a legal entity which can take care of the accounting of the contracts and stuff like that. Because if you're just like 10 people volunteering for having a meetup or a conference, uh, the company doesn't then have someone uh, to do the business with. So you can probably delegate it to maybe. Uh, Python Software Foundation or something like that, I don't know, but we have our own local nonprofit, which was like easy to set up. Uh, it's harder to keep it going, but uh, basically its only purpose is to be this, it, like it doesn't tell volunteers what to do. It's the only purpose is to be the accounting entity and basically to the supporting entity. So it's not like top down that we have a nonprofit and we tell people like what to do, but we are the service uh, service uh, non-profit for the volunteers. So they come after us and say, we need that, and we will try to take care of that. So, unfortunately, it's already the end, so we have to go out of the room. It's coffee break now. Thank you all for joining and sharing so openly everything you've learned. Thank you all for listening as well. I think... Uh, if you have any more questions, I think everyone's around. We're, we're happy to chat outside with a coffee. If you have like further questions or you want to exchange, also like we also on multiple different I don't know where social media where you might ping us or find us. So maybe we can improve that as well um, and to be more reachable for advice. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the panel and yeah, have a nice coffee break. Thank you. Yeah.